we have this courtesy of the fire and the kids subreddit right um i'm still a bit hmm i'm still a bit miffed by this because i guess yeah i'm still a bit confused by this personally i'm really confused because i guess with brendan there was a time where he was meant to play in albany and for some reason now it's, it's been cancelled it there were gig was there listed but all of a sudden now it's completely gone from the website and i am really confused because i can't figure out why comedy clubs book the way they do like and i would like to really get to the bottom of the business behind comedy clubs because something something doesn't make sense here for me it all just doesn't make any sense because he had a gig listed at these places and now all of a sudden they're all completely gone so this is Curtis Fanny Cassabra, as you can see. Papa's officially cancelled his one nighter in Albany. And if I just sorry, let me quickly remove the chat here. You'll see that, you know, he was listed on there prior, but now the entire weekend he's not on there. So those are dates he was meant to be doing. Friday the eighth, um, right? Sorry, to Friday the fourth, sorry, of August. And now if you go back on there, his gigs on the fourth are gone. Right? So they're completely gone. So I want to know what is the what is the kind of business of stand-up comedy shows because i know for me in the dj world for the most part a lot of people that get booked usually get booked based on their ability to sell tickets some of it might be because they're really good at what they do they've got really good tunes out that people like but usually it comes down to probably those those two i mentioned and also your ability to move tickets so even if you're not good technically on a night you're carried out of your mind, you're drunk at the, on the fucking decks, you're clanging all over the place, but you sold out the venue or you nearly sold it out or you sold a bunch of tickets, more likely than not, you get invited back because they know you can attract a crowd. That's what kind of promoters or venue owners look for. So I thought that was really the same thing in comedy world. Like your ability to sell tickets would really impact your ability to keep booking shows in places because they know if they put you down for a weekend you can sell more than half so why is it with brendan he consistently gets shows but then consistently keeps cancelling but then consistently gets shows like what's going on here is it true what fucking what's his face what unique is saying because unique unique is theory which i i, I can't believe this is, I, I don't think this is true because brendan's way too he's been in the scene too long you know like but sorry unique's theory is that brendan is booking these shows himself that's a unique theory. unique thing brendan is booking the, like he goes out and he hires these venues to do shows and to make himself look like a legit comic but they're not actually hiring him to play at their place he's hiring the venue and then if he doesn't sell he doesn't sell but he doesn't really you know he kind of is out of pocket himself but it doesn't hurt the venue if he doesn't sell kind of thing they just scrap the show and get somebody else in to make it worth their while but i don't think that's true so if if i if i don't think that's true and i kind of agree with my kind of point of view like why is it comedy shows just keep booking him when he doesn't sell tickets what we're we saying here um he wants to look active oh you think that's it cloud kit that's not, that should be a good that's actually a good resolution he wants to look active and then he just cancels that would be crazy isn't it he just does it so he can have that end of the show thing where he goes okay see me out here see me there so he book shows just so he can have something to talk about to plug at the end of the show fucking hell man the need to like honestly i'm so thankful i don't have that thing in me of always wanting to have an like always caring about how i'm perceived like kind of thing you know like wanting to make sure people know that i'm successful and stuff i'm glad i'm not that person because if i was what a hell to be in where well, you're booking shows so you look busy but then you know full well you're going to cancel them <sighs> um Uche is saying he books just in hopes that they'll sell. When they don't, he bows out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what Cloud K2 said. That's fucking sad, man. That is so sad. Imagine being that person. Instead of actually just focusing on your work, focusing on your craft, you're more worried about your how your your perception and you go out and book shows, hoping you get they sell. If they sell, they do. If they don't, they don't. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Um in retail, there's a thing. I forgot what the name of it. That the, there's a term in retail. Uh imagine if maybe you guys know in the chat in retail if you've got like a brand if you've got a clothing brand and the store doesn't buy it from you there's an option where you can essentially have it hung up in the store and wherever they sell they sell but there's no incentive for the shop to put it in a good place you can just have it in the store it's a called something 
There's a term for it. I forgot what it's called. But if you've got your own brand, but they don't buy it from you as a wholesaler, but you go and say, you, you, got, you basically say, hey, I've got this t-shirt brand. Can you now have it in your store? They don't buy it off you, but if they sell it, they sell it. If they don't, they don't kind of thing. But they don't have any incentive to... But anyway, it kind of feels a little bit like that. That's kind of what he's doing. I don't know what the term is in retail, but there's a term for it. On return, that's it. Thank you, 730. Fucking legend. On return. That's it, on return. It's, that's a term in retail where essentially if you've got your own brand and a brand doesn't pick it up but you want to get it in stores and you want to see in certain retail locations, you can have them basically, you know, have on sale on return essentially. So if they sell it, they sell it. If they don't, they give it back to you. But the problem for a brand owner is that the fucking um, retailer is in no incentive to push your product. So they're not going to put it on the mannequin. They're not going to put it on the rails as you come into the door or anything like that. It's usually going to be back in the fucking, you know, in the back somewhere where no one kind of cares about it. So all those things kind of... um damage that in that regard so brendan's kind of doing the same thing with comedy it's sort of like a sale and return career essentially he's just booking the shows then if they sell they sell it's a beauty but if they don't he could just cancel and bow out and never explain himself because you know why would you explain yourself it's a strange way to go about your career honestly i don't really understand it man really don't get it we've got a few more here uh miss one's courtesy of the of it again says well papa won't have it to remember libby township Ohio's name or Columbus for that matter um cancelled <laughs> again this is only funny because it's him because he's made such a big deal out of being or out of kind of sh acting like he's a big deal and laughing at others who don't sell tickets and then him himself can't sell tickets to save his life like it's pretty embarrassing how this happens the cancellation rate but I wonder if this is going to end up buying him in a bum sooner rather than later just keep booking these tickets and booking, sorry, booking these gigs, cancelling, booking, cancelling. I wonder if we'll eventually catch up with him or if this is something all comedians do. I have a fear it's probably the latter. I don't think Brendan is, uh, wait to say, I don't think he's as malicious as people paying him out to be. I think some of it is just him copying whatever everyone else does. But because he's way more unlikable, it comes, it comes across worse. But I think probably, most likely, most comedians do this they do this fucking weird hustle where they want to just book a show and then cancel it if it doesn't sell um knowing full well it's not going to sell just so they can look busy which is fucking sad in my opinion it's the most pathetic sad thing i've ever seen in my entire life but again when it comes to this stuff i don't know what i'm talking about i'm just a small guy with a small channel talking out to us cloud k20 said book it shows probably bolsters whatever advertising dollars he has left coming in for the pod keep him relevant yeah yeah true i I think that's true as well cloud k20 i think there's there's such a dirty game in podcasting and content creation overall after what bgl said about how they do ads essentially bgl was like oh they basically have ads specked out for like three months in advance or something so essentially it kind of gives the onus of the podcast person to scam because if you get a podcast sponsorship marketing whatever deal for three months it's basically based on the three months ago you know numbers so if your dip, views dip in between that it doesn't matter you still get the fucking money or however long the contract is and then you could also if you want to towards the end kind of you know pump out you know because i think some people on the safari kid reddit were seen were seeing those patterns like whenever the contracts were running out suddenly brendan started buying views again on t5k or allegedly that was what started happening so maybe that's what it kind of does this kind of creates this weird environment this economy where everyone's kind of incentivized to kind of fake it to you make it a scam it's really bizarre so in one way you can't really blame people like brendan too much for doing what he's doing i think the system is set up the way like it is to kind of do that like you know like advertising maybe is based on the amount of traction you've got online the amount of shows you booked all this stuff is probably gets into it their decision making process which is fucking bizarre but hey what do i know what we say in chat booking shows probably the ball um game bread footballer says for his birthday he should chip in and buy him a new personality lols crash says do you think he ever performs at the comedy store again not even become a paid regular like do you think he ever gets on the bill nah who said it was it uche said it or somebody else Some, i think it might have been uche who said it that the the person in charge now the comedy store is like a woman and she's kind of progressive or something. Who said this to me? Or, or, no, or maybe it was Martha. Somebody said it to me. That the person who's in charge of the comedy store is like a woman or somebody or somebody super progressive, super left-leaning. And they legitimately don't like Brian Callen and Chris Lee, all those kind of guys. You know what I mean? So they came in with the exact fucking 
determination of getting those people out. I'm pretty sure someone said it because Joe Rogan took the former guy from the comedy store over to fucking um, his store, in it, um, the comedy mothership. So I'm pretty sure the person in there now is that's probably why they don't get invited back on there to do shows and stuff. So not happening with Brendan, no way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, I think it was Mafia. Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, I think it was Mafia that said it. So the person that is doing the show's booking there, the, the, the new Adam Eager, for instance, at the comedy store, doesn't fuck with basically Joe Rogan's guys as much, which makes sense because if you go to the comedy store, last time I checked their Instagram, there was a bunch of people there who I don't recognize. So I think the comedy store people clearly wanted to kind of took the opportunity that Rogan was leaving to just refresh the whole store. Because it started to get a bit stale. Maybe during the pandemic, people left and moved and stuff. They just went to refresh it. So to refresh it, sorry. So they did it. And clearly, you know, Chappelle getting passed is a good example of the new direction they're kind of going in. Because I feel like if Joe Rogan was around and LA still, I don't think the Chappelle's of this world would have got passed. You know what I mean? It still would have been the boys club that they had going on there. Um, so this person clearly has a new direction. So it's, it's good to see. It's good to see, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Um... Another person here says, P. Oh, no, Bala says here, if he's hiring venues and then cancelling, he would still have to pay for the venue. Just seems like a lot of money doesn't have to be wasted. But that's a thing, Bala. That's a thing, Bala. Brendan's whole life is like that. Like this idea of just spending money like it never runs out. Like, again, I don't like to pocket watch. I really don't. But I, for one, just can't understand how he affords everything. Because his outgoings, like if you just think about it for just a second his brendan schub's outgoings must be silly like his monthly bill must be crazy when you think about the rent for the new studio all the all the stuff that to do with that the bills associated with that the however much he pays for his mansion the cars he leases the kids go to private school he's got a stay-at-home wife mum, like you know and she's got very expensive taste she doesn't like wearing coach bags, right? She's into fucking Birkins and Tom Ford and Gucci, Hermes sandals and shit. And then his own expensive taste in stuff. That's a lot of outgoings a month. Like, can you just imagine what that outgoing bill is a month? So if that is what it is, just imagine all the stuff he has going on. Does it really sound like he can cover everything with the stuff he has going on? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe there's enough sponsorships and views coming in. I don't really know, but that's a hell of a lot of money, bro. A hell of a lot of money. Like, that goes out every single month so i don't know exactly she doesn't drink water coil exactly she doesn't drink water like this lady is like on another planet like doesn't drink water is dripped head to toe in balenciaga and gucci and tom Ford. stay at home mom doesn't have a job so it's literally only one salary coming into that family maybe you know maybe more but i don't know how he affords everything i really don't i admire the hustle and stuff in the part of me but I don't know how he affords anything. The only way that makes sense is if his dad pays for everything in the background silently. But again, you know, he's never going to admit that because that'd make you look horrendous, especially having consideration how much he takes the piss out of Brendan for being a rich kid. But that's the only way it makes sense to me how he can afford everything. Or the only other, the only other solution, the only other answer to that would be this. Maybe we underestimate just how much money successful podcasts make. We actually underestimate that. That's the thing probably... I'm probably guilty of that myself because I think I remember when Rogan was debating about going to Spotify, the numbers that get get were getting thrown out there was like 30 million or something, 30, 50 million. He was making when he wasn't on Spotify every year. That's somebody I remember saying. I don't know if that's true, but I remember that was a figure that was getting thrown out there that he was making every year on, when he was just doing his podcast not on spotify on youtube on all the podcasting platforms by himself with no other person involved he was making somewhere in the region of like 30 million a year if that's true that's a good example of like how much money there is in this shit if you're successful and stuff so maybe brendan actually is making a lot of money it doesn't look like it but maybe he is so that maybe is how he's covering it but you know the, the tours are drying up like if you even look at the, the dates here the tours are drying up in terms of the dates he's not having as many dates as he used to have right they're all kind of like july he's only got one day oh, oh, july this day already he's only one here august there's one two three september there's one two three not including skank fest and in november there's one right so the the, the the gigs aren't as plentiful as they once were 
So how the hell and the views of the podcast are, you know, minimum maybe fifty fifty thousand under. Like how is he fucking keeping the lights on? Like that's what I wanna know. Again, not pocket watching, not my business, but I'm fucking fascinated. Really, really I'm fascinated. Um, Uche, he was making a killing back in the day when he was Cass was hitting 600k views uh, but now he's better exactly now he's better not even I don't even think there's I can't think of a recent pod I saw TFAT K where they hit 100,000 I think it's mostly around the 50 to 60k um, what we're saying it don't, wouldn't surprise me if he's in debt to his eyeballs using his business to take loans and write off expenses yeah true but that again that's that's just a weird way to do business I just don't know why he moved studios personally I, I know, maybe there was a reason behind it because he went to show off because he went to kind of prove to the doubters that he didn't get fired and he wasn't down bad after showtime but i really don't know why he decided to you know um i don't know how he decided why he decided to kind of leave that smaller studio for the bigger one because there really wasn't a real plan in place to kind of keep that big place there wasn't really a plan like the shows and stuff it wasn't really laid out well like everything was a bit you know Natasha, you say Tim Dillon when he first started Patreon as years ago was making seventy five k a month. Yeah, true. Everything's kind of gone down a bit. Don't get me wrong, but I think Tim as well. He's he's very lean. His operation. He's not a lean guy, clearly, but his operation is very lean. It's just him, you know. Yo, big up, uh, Sting. Agu. Just joining. What's up, you redax? Hey, big up. Hold on. Let me let me play that one more time. Sorry, my friend. It didn't show up on the screen. <clears throat> For some reason, it didn't say. Let me just make that a bit bigger there. There we go. One more time. Big up Sting. I go. Appreciate you, brother. It didn't play the fucking TTS, but hey, it's there. Thank you, um, Sting. I go. Just joining. What's up, you Redux? Yes, big up. Thank you for joining, my friend. Appreciate ya. Um, but yeah, who knows? Um, who fucking knows? So yeah, maybe I've got this all wrong and the guy is absolutely raking it in and we're all underestimating that even though, you know, because I think what people also underestimate is that once you get caught into like a, because I think some of us are like former TFAT K fans, I know I am, and some of us can just stop listening to stuff and just, you know, we can abandon it and just like move on. But I think some people don't really listen to many things. So if you have one thing that occupies your weekly listening amount of stuff you know what i mean like it's hard to kind of break away from it so i think there's a lot of fans that still listen to tfat k clearly that would make it worthwhile enough to continue doing the show that will make it also appealing to advertisers and sponsors so i still think there is a big portion of those people who just keep listening just out of habit and that's what's basically keeping the lights on yes big up reagan appreciate you bruv why you do a podcast same night as ufc I stay watching you too. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Reagan. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, I was gonna do a flipping watch along for the UFC and stuff, but I really can't offer any big insight in this, and I'm not gonna do it. Well, so I'm just gonna carry on doing my random show. And again, if you if you wanna jump off the list, watch your UFC, do it, no problem. I won't take offense to that in the slightest, my friend. But thank you for the three dollars, brother. But yeah, I'm not gonna. Do you know what I mean, I, I, what what can I do with this stuff? The, the only way I could I could make that work is if I could actually show it on the screen, but I can't because I get fucking you know removed out of the fucking you know I'd, I'd get fucking thrown out of you know every fucking platform possible if i show that on screen but i don't think i have a good enough grasp on fucking fighting and anything to kind of offer anything you know substantial 